G'day guys, Matt here from Not In The Manual. Today's video is going to be on tyre wear, tyre rotation. My car is now at just over 10,000 kilometres. So I want to just check the tread wear on my tyres, uh, all four tyres. And we're going to be looking, also looking for signs of uh, wheel alignment issues, uh, uneven wear on the tyres, and just have a general inspection of, of them as well. So I, I think Tesla recommend 10,000 kilometres. I'll, I'll, have, I'll have a look, but uh, I, I like to do it at 10,000 kilometre uh, intervals. This is a rear wheel drive, so the wear will definitely be uneven from front to rear. This car isn't as powerful as my Model 3 rear wheel drive was. Uh, not as torquey, uh, but it is, a, it is slightly heavier. It's a couple, couple of hundred kilos heavier than my Model 3 was. So I'm not really expecting to find anything too bad with the tires. I, I think, I'm hoping that the wear will be a little bit more even in this car. Tesla recommend, I think it's one and a half millimeters difference in diameter or tread wear between the front and the rear tires to do a rotation at that point. Even if I'm not at one and a half millimeters different, I'm still going to do the rotation. I want to dis distribute that wear uh, across all four tires to get the most out of these tires. I'm hoping with this car to get a lot longer out of the tires and I ended up replacing the tires on my Model 3 at 20, just over 25,000 kilometers just due to not rotating the tires. And I'm not gonna go into that whole story. You can go back and have a look at some of my previous videos to, to if you wanna learn about that. But that was my stuff up and I wanna be a bit more vigilant this time and rotate the tires at, at 10,000. So yeah, we will be just measuring the tread depth on each tire and I'm gonna measure the tread depth on the inside and the outside. And then I'm gonna just put the car on flat level ground and jack up each side of the car and do one side at a time and swap the rear to the front. I always like to do that as the first rotation for no particular reason and that's just a bit easier for me to do initially instead of trying to jack up the whole front of the car or the whole back of the car uh, you you end up with the dry all the driving wheels off the ground I, I prefer just just to do one side at a time if I'm doing it myself and uh, I, I will take it to a shop on the next rotation and get a wheel alignment done at that stage I may find that during my wheel rotation now that I do find some signs of uh, you know, mis wheel misalignment, we're going to look for uneven tread wear, but if I do notice that, I'll probably still just do the rotation myself and then take it for a wheel alignment and just get a wheel alignment done. To get a rotation and a wheel alignment done, most tyre repair places or uh, tyre places, uh, workshops, will charge you, you know, somewhere between $75 and $100 to do that. Now, if you go to Tesla, they're going to charge you $250, $300, maybe more to do that. Uh, it's up to you. If you prefer to just get a mobile service tech to come out and do that on your car, uh, go for it. Just book in a service appointment. So you can probably just get a mobile guy to come out and do that or possibly they'll get you to go into a service center depending on where you live and what availability they have. So I recommend you do just get it done anyway. Uh, just for safety reasons, it, it, tires are easy to forget about and there, there could well be some damage to a sidewall you haven't noticed that uh, would let you down when you then go on a road trip and you haven't seen it. So. I think it is really good just to keep an eye on your tires at, at a regular interval. What I'm going to do now is just try and find some flat level ground uh, probably tomorrow and I will yeah start checking the tires and we'll just run you through some things you can do yourself at home to to check your tires so let's get to it. Okay so I'm set up here in a flat level surface this is our parking garage here at work sorry about there's going to be, the, there's going to be a little bit of an echo down here but not much I can do about that. So this is a safe place to work. It's nice and flat level. I've got my two jacks set up. So we're going to lift one side of the car up at a time. 
swap the wheels around and do a tyre rotation that way from back to front. And that's what I'm going to do here. So really I think this is probably a good thing just to get a tyre place to do. But as I explained before, I wanted to do this video to show you how you could do it at home if you wanted to. And I'm doing this without a spare wheel as well. If you had a spare wheel, then you could just do one wheel at a time. You could jack the car up, take that wheel off, put your spare wheel on, move to the front, jack it up, swap that wheel over. It's just going to take a little bit longer than jacking up one side of the car at a time. So obviously with a big four post hoist in a tire place, it's going to be even faster because they can just have all four wheels off the ground at one time. It's much easier for them to swap from one side of the car to the other. It's a little bit more complicated to jack up just the front or the rear of the car. Uh, it, it's much easier to keep an eye on everything on one side here. So that's what I'm doing here today. So this isn't what I expect you guys to do every time. And it's not what this video is about. It's not about doing your own tire rotation. This is just purely for the video. So I think a lot of the time at 10,000 kilometers, a lot of people are going to need a wheel alignment done. And I will probably get that done on this car as well. I've got a trip coming up where I'm going down to uh, Threadbow, which is about a six hour drive, five, six hour drive uh, south of Sydney down into the Alpine regions there just to do some mountain biking. So I, I wanna make sure that my wheel alignment is, is correct for that trip. But what we're going to do is look for signs of incorrect wheel alignment on the tires. So this car hasn't been touched since it left Tesla, since I picked it up. It hasn't had a wheel alignment done. It hasn't had a tire rotation done and I'm just over 10,000 kilometers. So there, there is a possibility that something wasn't set up correctly from new and hopefully we're going to see that with the wear on the tires when we have a look. So what I'm going to do here now is jack the car up. We're going to take the wheels off. I might just do a quick walk around and show you the tools that I've got for this job, just so you can see what I've got here. So we will take the wheels off. Then we're going to start having a look at the tread a bit, bit closer and we'll run through some things that you need to check. Okay, so I've got some hydraulic trolley jacks here. Now they have 1700 kilogram capacity each, so they're more than enough just to lift up a corner of this car each. So remember it's not taking the whole car's weight. I have these little uh, Tesla lifting, um, lift, little lifting jacks. So they're going to sit on the lifting point of the jack here. And this little uh, knob on the end of here locates into, the, into a slot in the car and that is the safe lifting point. It's the only point in the car that you should lift, lift the car from, otherwise you could risk damaging the battery. You can't just go putting the jack anywhere underneath here. So we'll try and have a bit, bit of a closer look at those in a sec when I, when I start lifting the car up. So I've also got some timber blocks which I'm going to stick under the car as a safety measure. You should never ever rely on the jacks on their own. So you can see I've got both jacks here. I've got my blocks of timber. Now here I have a tire lever to undo the lug nuts and I also have a little lug nut tool because I can't find the one that I bought. So I've just fashioned, fashioned up one out of a piece of steel I found in my workshop. Uh, and I also have a torque wrench. Ooh, I've got the 21 millimeter socket on the end here and that's got a little bit of a protection around the outside to stop you scratching your wheels or anything there. So I have a torque wrench, so we've got 129 foot-pounds or 175 newton metres of torque. For the wheel nuts, I always put a torque wrench onto the wheel nuts. Now, if I'm travelling, I've got another kit over here. So I put the torque wrench away in there. I've got a scissor jack here, emergency kit with some gloves. And that's where I have the, the tyre lever and everything in there as well. And yeah basically we're just going to go along and take off the lug nut covers on each wheel we're going to access the the wheel nuts in behind there actually i'll just take one of them off now so you can see what's behind so i had the 20 inch induction wheels so you can see my little tool here you can pull the lug nut cover off easy and we've got the five nuts there as well
Okay, so I have both the front and the rear tyres here and really just need to start with a, with a sort of a general, just basic look over the tyre. Looking for, go around the whole tyre, looking for any unusual wear or damage to the tyre. Now the side walls, which I've got conveniently hidden here, <laughs> you want to have a look if you've gone round onto a kerb and taken a big chunk out of the tyre. Now I've got a couple of areas here where there is a tiny bit of damage to the sidewall here, but it's just in that, uh, on that lip here, it's more just scrapes. So if you have a big uh, chunk out of the sidewall of your tire that's exposing the, the little threads or plies underneath, that needs to be replaced because if that sidewall comes apart, you're gonna have a catastrophic tire failure. And if that happens at high speed, it's not gonna be a good outcome. So I'd really be looking for that. So I guess the question people are asking is, when do you need to rotate your tires? Now, I, my opinion is it should be done between every sort of eight to 10,000 kilometers, depending on how hard you drive. If you drive really hard and fast and take corners really fast, then you probably want to do it more sort of around the seven or 8,000 kilometer mark, maybe even sooner. It's a matter of just inspecting your tires regularly and looking for uneven wear. Now this is the front tire here and this is the rear tire and these are the outer edges. So the outer edge of a front tire, as you're turning, that sort of rolls a little bit and folds. It shouldn't do it too badly if you have your tire pressure correct. You should get a nice sort of even wear because the contact patch is going to be pretty even if you have your tire pressure set correctly. Now with the modern cars with the tire pressure sensors, uh, that's much more e easier to keep your tire pressures within specifications. So it's always monitoring that for you. But one of the reasons to, to rotate may not be tread overall tread wear difference in, in the tread depth. It can just be to, to evenly distribute this shoulder wear here you get from your front tires, the steering tires, and you want to rotate them with the rears. So it's, it's always good to rotate. I've had some people comment and say that the Tesla didn't rotate my tires or the tire shop didn't rotate my tires because there wasn't a one and a half millimeter difference between the front and the rear. But I really wouldn't wait that long. I would just replace, I would just rotate them at 10,000 kilometers no matter what. And that would just help to evenly distribute the wear. You, you know, it may be like sort of half a millimeter of wear difference, but I think it's good to spread that out across all four tires to maximize your tire life. So you don't want to end up in a situation like I did with my Model 3 where I didn't rotate my tires and I ended up having to replace the rear tires, but there was going to be too much of a difference between the front and the new rear, so I had to replace all four tires and that was done at 25,000 kilometers, so much, much too early. So with these tires, I'm hoping to get sort of 40 or 50,000 kilometers out of them. And looking at them now after 10,000 kilometers, just my first impression is they look quite good. I'm not really seeing any unusual tire wear. I'm not seeing any uh, sort of uh, excessive wear in the middle. I'm not seeing any excessive wear at the edges. So you're looking for the outside and the inside edge for, for, to look for wheel alignment issues. So if the wheel, wheels aren't aligned, your front tires end up doing this snow plowing thing as you drive along and you get this uneven wear on the outer edges of your tread. If your tires are overinflated, you tend to get more wear in the middle of your tire. So it's where tire pressure is key. But as I said before, tire pressure monitoring is, is, makes that so much easier. So what we're gonna do now is measure the tread depth. So I have this tread depth gauge. It's just a cheap little gauge I bought from uh, one of the auto supply places, Repco or Super Cheap Auto. And it's just a matter of, you know, you're measuring these channels here. So it's just a matter of sitting the tool in here and having that center pin touch in the bottom of the groove. And then we're going to have a look at what the reading is. So we are sitting at about six millimeters there for that tread and then we're about the same on that 
and then we'll check the outer here. Sorry, this is hard to do one-handed. And we're about six millimeters there as well. And let's check this tread. We're just under six millimeters, but that's the rear one. So I'm expecting a little bit more wear there. And we are at about five millimeters there. And we are five millimeters there as well. And we're five millimeters there too. So I'm seeing on the rear tires, I've got five millimeters of tread left and on the front, I've got six. So I think I started off at about six and a half. So you can see there is one millimeter of tread difference between the front and the rears already. So that just proved rear wheel drive. You definitely must, and I don't drive this car that hard, but you can see I do have a difference in the tread wear front to back. Now, minimum tread depth, is going to be at about three millimeters. So I've got another two millimeters of tread wear on this left. So you can see in 10,000 kilometers, I've worn one and a half millimeters. So, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to get to 40,000 kilometers. So these grooves here are what dissipate the water. As your tires roll over water, it needs these grooves and channels here to be able to hold that water and basically evacuate that water from underneath the tread to let the tread come in contact with the road. And so you, you're not aquaplaning across the top of the water. So you wanna just get rid of that, that water. So as these channels get smaller, they have less capacity to do that. They can only get rid of so much water. And so once you get down to about three millimeters of tread depth, that is really uh, you know, drastically reduced, that capacity to, to push the water away. So the tire can only do so much and these channels here are the main evacuation points for that water. So any water that can't be pushed out the side of the tire needs to sit in these channels. So those channels have a reduced capacity as the tire wears. So another little trick I saw last night when I was doing a little bit of research was a 20 cent piece here. So on the Australian 20 cent coin, we have a platypus on there. So that's a weird, another weird Australian animal. So the bill of the platypus on this coin is three millimeters from the bottom of the coin. So if we come round to the side of the tire here and you stick that 20 cent piece in the tire, you don't want to be able to see the end of that platypus's bill. So you can see there that whole bill is still you know, within the tread. So if I could see that platypus's bill, then I know that this tire is below three millimeters worn. So just a handy tip. I know we're not really carrying cash much these days, but that's a little trick if you don't have one of those little tread depth indicators. So another option, tires have a built-in tread wear indicator. So if you follow a groove along and just run your finger along, you'll eventually hit, you'll eventually hit one of these. So these here are wear indicators. So once your tread wears down to those indicators, that is time to replace it. Now that's going to be at about two and a half millimeters, which is already probably too far. So once you start getting down pretty close to that uh, with three millimeters or less, the tires need to be replaced. So now what I'm going to do is just go around and, and, and check the rest of this tire, just have a quick look, looking for any screws that are in them, any damage and any unusual wear. What I also want to show you, we're going to go over here in a second and just have a look. Actually, I might be able to show you now. I'm not sure whether this camera is going to show me. It is a little bit difficult to see, but in on that motor, I don't know whether you can see in there. Might try getting my phone, but inside here, it tells you which motor the car has, which power unit it has. All right, so we will put the iPhone down in here and try and see there what motor this car has. So this is the 3D7 motor you can see there. So this is the lower powered one. So the performance 
models of these have a 3D6 motor, which is the 440 Newton meters of torque motor. So it's a bigger diameter motor, it's got a bit more power. This one is a 3D7 and it's what's on the Model 3 and the Model Y rear wheel drives. And this is the lower power. This is 340 Newton meters of torque and roughly 220 kilowatts. So this is the lower powered motor. So what I've said all along is the Model Y could do with the 3D6 motor in the rear to have a bit more torque for the heavier weight, but you know maybe Tesla will do that at some stage. You know, I think in China for the China built or for the Chinese market, they do put the 3D6 motors in the rear of these, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to show you here is this is your rear brake caliper. So in an electric car, you have normal brake calipers. So you can see the hydraulic line coming in here, but we also have an electrical cable coming in that goes to the park brake unit here. Now that is an actuator. See if I can get the light here a bit better. So you can see here, that is an electric actuator there that mechanically operates this rear brake caliper when you put the car in park. So there is no park brake cable. It's all done with this electric actuator here and that's all integrated into the rear caliper. That's not something unique to Tesla. That's something a lot of cars have, Hyundai, Toyotas, everything. They've all gone to, a lot of them, you know, have the electric park brake. So you'll see if you have a park brake switch on your dash, more than likely you will have this sort of actuator integrated into your rear brake caliper. But for normal braking, which you don't often need to use with one pedal driving, you have the hydraulic brake line coming in here, which comes from your, uh, you know, your eye brake set up at the front. So they still do use a hydraulic uh, circuit here for electric vehicles. Okay, I forgot to mention before, I have the Michelin Pilot Sport EV T1 tires with the acoustic foam, and they are the 25540 R20s. These are really great performance tires. Michelin do a fantastic job of finding a balance between performance, wear life, uh, wet weather performance. This is a great all round tire. Now with these 20 inch wheels and these uh, you know, higher end tires, Michelin Pilot Sport EVs, you're getting great performance. So if you want better handling, if handling is your thing, um, these, these are it's a great option. I have not regretted going for the 20 inch wheels on my Model Y. Uh, the performance is great. I haven't really noticed a difference in efficiency. So I, I don't know, it's, if this car still, does everything I need it to. Uh, if there is a difference in efficiency, I haven't noticed it yet. So you saw that my efficiency uh, is at 10,000 kilometers. It's 147 watt hours per kilometer. Now that's only marginally less than my Model 3 was at 143 or 144 watt hours per kilometer over 40,000 kilometers. So I've been very, very happy with these tires. Now that, that one to one and a half mil wear that I've got on them after 10,000 kilometers, I'm still expecting to get about 40,000 kilometers out of these tires. So somewhere between 30 and 40, I think, depending on how I drive the car. Okay, I'll just point out here, see on the tires here, there are some minor little nicks and scratches out of the sidewall. You can see there I've, I've caught my mag back rim case here and taken a tiny little little chunk out of there but yeah they are just cosmetic they're not going to cause me any drama so I'm still happy with the mag back, mag back uh, rim case protectors here. They've done a great job. I've had to replace a couple of segments here when I've scraped against the curb and Still, still going strong, they're still attached to the wheel and working well. Okay, so I've got both tyres inspected now, they both look pretty good. I've got the front tyre moved to the rear position here and then I've got the rear tyre moved to the front. And just need to put them back on, so we'll just time lapse that and then I'll just go through a couple more things once the wheels are on. Just a word of advice, as I said I didn't want this to be a tyre fitting video, but when you've got your wheel nuts, you can see I have a 
an electric battery powered rattle gun here. So you've got to be super, super careful using these. So you should always start your wheel nuts by hand just to make sure that thread has started. If you get the rattle gun and then try and just push that on and start the thread using the rattle gun and you're not quite straight, you can just stuff the thread and end up having to replace a wheel stud. And that can be an expensive exercise. So always good to just start them by hand. Then I'm gonna just nip them up with the rattle gun just to save a bit of time. And then we're going to use the torque wrench wherever I've put that <laughs> to um, torque up these wheel nuts. So very, the, the Tesla wheel nuts end up having to do, be done up very tight. So it's always good to just run a torque wrench over them to be sure. Once you're all done rotating your tyres, you need to then go into the service menu. Then we'll go down to wheels and tyres. Go to the tyre section. All season or summer. And then hit reset. So it says limit hard acceleration in the first few minutes of driving to ensure vehicle calibration. So this now sets a calibration point for the tyre wear where it's at at the moment. And it's a good thing now just to recheck your tyre pressures as well and make sure that they're within specification, which you can also see here as well. So once you start driving, that will all change and it gives you the recommended pressures here on the screen, 2.9 bar front and rear. So yeah, you can also reset the tire mileage here I didn't realize maybe that's something new all right so my wheels are back on the wheel nuts or lug nuts are torqued up to 129 foot pounds 175 newton meters what I'd like to do is take the car for a drive just around the block come back and then retension them with the torque wrench again I've got the torque wrench right here just to be sure I always like to do that just in case for some reason you know, the weight wasn't evenly on the wheels or something like that. It's just a habit. I always like to double check the wheels after I take it for a drive. So what I'm gonna do is do the other side as well, but I won't bore you with the video of me <laughs> rotating the tires on that side. I guess the main thing here was to answer the question, uh, should you rotate your tires and when should you do it? So I hope I've answered that. Sorry, just messing around with the new camera here. So yeah, hopefully I've answered that question for you. And the main thing is, yes, you should rotate your tires. To answer that question, just plain and simple, yes, you should rotate your tires. When should you rotate your tires? I think somewhere between 7,000 and 10,000 kilometers, depending on how hard you drive the car. If you drive the car really hard with the rear wheel drive especially, you're going to wear those rear tires down. You can see here from mine at 10,000 kilometers, I've got one millimeter of tread difference between the front and the rear. So it definitely needed a rotation. Don't wait for it to get to one and a half millimeter difference between the front and the rear tires, because I think that's probably letting it go a bit too far. And the car is going to warn you, uh, one and a half, two millimeters difference between the front and the rear wheels. The car is that sensitive, it can pick that up and it will give you warning to say that your tires should be checked or rotated. This is if you forget to do it. With electric vehicles not having regular servicing, you can often forget about getting the tires checked. That's normally done at your 10,000 or 10 to 15,000 kilometer service interval with a petrol car. So with the electric car, that's not happening. So you need to be a bit more vigilant with checking your tires. So what we're doing here, we're not just rotating the tires. It gives you a chance to inspect the tires for damage, to look on that inside edge that you don't see from the outside of the car. It's, it's really critical to check that, especially on an electric vehicle where you often don't have a spare tire. You want to get problems taken care of before you're out on the road on a long trip somewhere. You want to be able to get in front of that and prevent those problems. So it becomes a part of your preventative maintenance schedule. 
it, it is really critical to do that. So I've had mixed feedback on the channel about tyres. I've had people say that Tesla didn't rotate their tyres because there wasn't a one and a half millimetre difference between the front. I don't know, my opinion is that should be done. Uh, you should just do it everywhere, at every 10,000 kilometres anyway, regardless of where the tyre wear is at, because it's not just the tread depth that's the problem. It's, as I said before, that the edges of your front tyres, because they're your steering tyres, they do wear at the edges a bit more than the rear, and you want to just spread that wear out. So guys, that's really all I wanted to show you here with this. Hopefully I've answered some of your questions and this video wasn't about showing you how to rotate the tires yourself. I think you should really take that to a professional tire place. It's going to be much easier for you to do. As I said before, this was just to help illustrate the process to you and I wanted to make a video on this. So that was easy for me to actually do the rotation myself, but I probably am going to take this car to the local tire place and get them to do a wheel alignment. That's going to cost me about $85, roughly maybe a little bit cheaper because they're not doing the rotation for me. They're just going to do a wheel alignment. So yeah, I, I think it's a must wheel alignment, wheel rotation to maximize the life and safety of your tires when you're driving. So guys, I really appreciate you watching. You know, you know I, it's another long video. That's just how I roll. So I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something and I'll catch you next video. Thanks.